Mm -hmm. I bless your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. I bless your name. We bless your name. your name bless your name your name we bless your name We bless your name. We give you all. We give you praise. The 
the truth and way. We bless your name. We bless your name. Hallelujah. God has given us a word today, very powerful. Don't miss. I pray that you invite someone. Invite someone to be on here today. Invite somebody to be on here today. God is about to do great and mighty things on this line. If you invite someone, I'm trying to invite some somebody. for the word of God today on yesterday we began to um, we talked about transition we talked about evolving transforming becoming allowing the unseen spiritual world and everything that God has in it for you to take shape and root in your life. In other words, finishing out the entire plan of God in His existence for your life. And there's no better time for us to talk about that like now. So I'm delighted that, you know, bless God, praise God, my sister Katrina, brother Martin, brother Lawrence, blessings. We talked about transitions. We're already living in that season, that time, where we are today. A lot of things are taking place. We've agreed ever since 2020 happened that this is the season we're in. And a lot, a whole lot of time, I mean, the, the normals, the, you know, the, 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 uh, the normal that we once were riding on has already shifted. The way we used to worship and go to church has already changed. You know, um, everything we know about life has already changed. We have, we, have, we have been rearranged totally. It doesn't mean that we are going to lose everything in the fire. You know, we're going to lose it all. But at least we know that there's a change that's taking place in our lives. We are, we are being told to wash our, our hands. Uh, we used to understand, you know, we used to be, you know, we used to be a little bit, um, interconnected. I told you yesterday we were very interconnected. Now we have to six feet distance. We used to be apparently being able to speak uh, around our friends. Now we're supposed to cover ourselves. The physical realm is shifting, it's changing, everything is going on, my friends. But so is what's happening in the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm things are shifting too. They're there's a whole lot of things that are taking place, and I, I shared with you if I might go back a little bit on where we were yesterday. Today I'm going to take number two, part two of the 
this transition, you know, because we all know that the physical has to give us the spiritual alignment. It gives us what we say, okay, if this is happening in the physical realm, what about the spiritual realm? What's happening in the spiritual realm? In the spiritual realm, I told you that you are a spirit housed in your body. So there are many, in the physical you see what happens here, but in the spirit, you can only see through the eyes of the Spirit of God or through faith in God. Without faith, you cannot grab a hold of the things you hope for, the substance of them, or how you're able to see them from afar and hope and believe and have great assurance that they will happen, they will come to pass. And a whole lot of times, people's hope is antagonized, especially when such a crisis like this or such a situation like this, some of the things you've gone through, keep themselves in between the time God makes a promise to you and where you're headed. In between there, you know, there's a disarray of rearrangements or a detour. We don't like detours. We don't like the comforts, uh, you know, the, uh, the discomfort that comes with all of that. Does that mean that God has changed his plan? No. We fully have to understand exactly what God said and how he said it and hung on it, pray through it, trust God in it, and know that the season we're living in, He said it, He spoke it, I'm not getting out of here until the fullness of God is manifested. So when you're that kind of woman and man of God who's going to hang on God's word completely fully, guess what's going to happen? All right? You're the one that is a partaker of the full promises of God, regardless of the kind of warfare that that you've gone through, regardless of the changes that you're watching around you, whatever happens, you're hanging in there to see the greatest manifestation of what God's saying. But before that, there is a spiritual world that sometimes to the, to the flesh, the spiritual world is very complex, very complex. You don't, you don't just get, go in there with your flesh and think you're going to understand the ways of God, the things of God, you know. It's very complex. It's going to require your total obedience, obedience to God. And therefore tonight, I endeavor to bring you some of the things that you're supposed to take. Brother Mike, we've had this before. I have been in the limbo. I've been in so many transitions. I understand what you're telling me that I should just shut up and don't tell you no, nothing more. And uh, you say, well, this just became even a greater burden on me right now. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get out of it. Well, I might as well encourage you tonight by the grace of God. You need to be reminded that God has not left his throne. God has not left his position. God has not forgotten your name. God has not forgotten what he promised you. You know, but the battle has intensified. Matter of fact, you know, you know that. You, you know so well. It's always after the word of God has come to you. Okay, it's always after the prophetic word, the confirmation has happened to you. That the enemy wants to disrupt everything to make it look like God never spoke to you make it look like God didn't say a word and I told you yesterday be very careful this is what I said I told you yesterday by the Spirit of God of course I said be very careful trying to underestimate God in your flesh because your flesh has got expectations all right Especially when it comes to promises. There are people that are too big on promises. And you don't promise them something and you don't fulfill it. Because you raise the expectation high. And after you raise the expectation high, guess what happens? They're going to expect on such and such a day. You're going to do what you say you're going to do. And all of a sudden, that's what the flesh wants. The flesh has had the word of God. Uh, the spirit has had the word of God. And the spirit is expecting. And the spirit tells the flesh, you know, God promised. That your body, your flesh begins to be excited because it's been longing to see some new season happen to you. It's been longing to see greater money. So there's an excitement. There's a, when, 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 when is this going to happen? God, how are you going to do this? What's going on? I'm expecting it. All of a sudden, there's some type of delay or some situation happens in between the promise and the manifestation. All of a sudden, anxiety kicks in. You know, you promised. You say this is what's going to happen. You know how you get excited when God does great mighty things in your life. Okay? But now that this happened, all of a sudden you're, you're, you're in this array. There's a level of unbelief and, 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 and <clears throat> restlessness and hopelessness 
that's gonna <clears throat> that's gonna begin to hit you. Sorry about that. And so when that begins to come at you, that's when the warfare, the enemy takes advantage of that spot. Right there when your emotions and your expectations come into play. And I told you yesterday, never allow your emotions to step into to come into play because not, though they're gonna start to grab a hold of all the other elements. In other words, the, the hitchhikers of 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 uh, of hopelessness and uh, raising our expectation and everything is confusion, anxiety, you know, unbelief, you know, disbelief. And so your flesh begins to invite all of those hitchhikers, I call them, because they all, the invaders of your faith, they come to take away from you the little strength, the little power, the little hope, the little faith you have, and once they start to invade your mind and you give in to them, now they're weakening your promise power. They're weakening your promise, your promise. Remember, your promise was God will take you to another dimension. God will give you a hope. God will give you, God will open doors that no man will shut. The prophetic word come to you to prepare you for great and mighty things, but now the flesh has come into war to literally bring a war against the word and plan of God. And you are supposed to be part of you fighting back and say, you know what? According to the word, according to what I just received, according to this season, according to where I am, I don't care. I'm, I ain't going to allow nothing to distract me. I won't allow the enemy to distract me. I won't allow this warfare to push me down and destroy my hope. Because I know underneath that promise of God, underneath the promise of God, there is a weapon. There's a weapon, there's a testimony that pushes the devil away, a, a, a million feet away. I am going to stand on God's word and I'm not letting go. I'm not letting my flesh, I'm not letting my kind of mind, I'm not letting even my friends try to take away what God said. I'm standing on, you know, the pandemic can come and uh, friends can come and go. Things may change. Whatever is taking place, I'm standing on God's word because the word of God said, that the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but you cannot tell where it, it comes from and where it goes but today you know uh you know the the weather app tells us where the wind is coming from because of the kind of technology but in the spiritual rain we have what we call the unknown seasons the unknown unless we abide in the lord unless we abide in god that's when we can begin to trace god's compass of what he's doing and that takes a greater level of a discipline okay it takes a greater level of a discipline to be on god's gps god's compass god's timing the flesh doesn't like to go on that one the flesh hates that one you know what I'm talking about. You've been expecting before. You've been hoping before. You've been believing before. You've been waiting before. And all of a sudden, the enemy threw in a whole lot of stuff and allowed your flesh to kick in. And instead of you joining, you being on God's side to see this come through, you are now joining the, the enemy's side and look at God as though he is a liar. Look at God as though he's a liar, as, as though he lied to you. He never lied to you. He never lied to you. He promised and he intends to keep his promise. He promised. Michael Caden, what promise are you talking about? What type of promise are you talking about? Okay? Because the way it looks like, things are not lining up right now. What promise are you talking about? I'm talking about the Word of God. The promise of what God said that He would do in your life. What promise? And everybody's going to ask, what promise? So I told you yesterday, avoid negativity, avoid anger, avoid anxiety, avoid self-doubt, avoid confusion, okay? Accept change, let go of the past. I'm going to repeat this for you. Avoid in the transition. When you're in the transition, avoid anger, avoid negativity, avoid anxiety, avoid confusion, because all of these that I'm mentioning to you, they come to wage war on you. They come to weaken your hope. They come to weaken your faith. They come to wear you out. You felt tired. You felt worn out. 
Lord, I can't believe I need it. I need I need like five people to raise me up and just give me give me an encouragement. I've been there too, especially when you start to pull in a greater hope of a greater vision that's going to cost you millions of dollars. Okay, so I am here to tell you, saints, that God has spoken a word over you. And the word that he's spoken over you is a word of hope. Do you see it tangibly? Not yet. Did he say it in the spirit? Yes, he did. Are you going to go through ups and downs about it? Somehow. But are you going to come out victorious? I. That's a, that's a very definite yes. Okay? So here's some of the things you should avoid. Uh, you know, transition will affect you emotionally. Yes, there's a reality. I, I shared about it before, and I told you David go through a tremendous amount of attack. In other words, you're not supposed to be in denial. Get rid of denial. Don't step in denial. Denial is the worst indicator. It's part of anxiety. Denial is to act as though what you're facing is not there. It is real. When you see that it's real, apply faith to it. Say, Lord, I see this situation here. I see it's trying to steal my faith. It's trying to take away my prayer. It's trying to take away my hope. You've already spoken. I see what it is. I ask you to give me power. Give me hope. Give me energy that I may penetrate through it, that I may break through it. Whatever comes at you in the midst of it, begin to pray through that. And when you pray into, into it, guess what? Whatever the enemy is trying to strike at you will be broken. And you're going to move on to the next dimension. Remember, the enemy is relentless the enemy is relentless tremendously relentless he won't stop he will not stop you hear me he won't stop and because he won't stop you're supposed to not stop too you're not supposed to push back you're supposed to push back you hear me and therefore, I've just given you that intro for a second. You remember yesterday, while we're still going at it, at it, you know, somehow our connection stopped. So part two, you know, I began yesterday, before we close, I began to say you're supposed to have the right perspective. Right perspective. God has spoken, and he says, the wind blows. You hear it. You don't know where it's going. You're unpredictable, because your spirit, that's... Let me say this to you straight. Don't get off. Okay? The person that despised you today, the person that underestimated you today, just missed your breakthrough tomorrow. The person that despised you in your past, the person that tried to bully you, and the person that tries to abuse your integrity, and go behind your back and blaspheme you and uh, blunder you, and be with malice and jealous. They just missed. This is what they missed. They missed your potential in the spirit. But because by this time tomorrow, the greatest blessing of God is about to be unleashed in the name of Jesus. Let me say that to you. Because everybody can trace you on your address because they see you. But not all of them know your potential in the spirit. God is not very talkative. He doesn't just go around in everybody's house and tell people about your business. Now, people who think know you better will go around everybody and tell, they, they, they tell everybody about the little fraction of what they know about you. They tell everybody the little bit they know about you. But guess what? The author and the finisher of your faith knows more about you because before you were born in your mother's womb, okay, he established everything pertaining to your name okay pertaining to your name now it's been the enemy it's been the enemy that's been trying to break you know that timeline of what god began from eternity before the foundation to here when you landed here the enemy could be able to trace your whereabouts and when he doesn't trace you he goes back to emotions feelings setbacks disappointments he picks up all your pains and wounds and puts them in one box and throws them back in your face. So when you start to feel, when you start to go through that, that's when he says, you know what, we got her. We got him where we want him. But guess what? 
He cannot trust you. That's why the people who despise you today just missed your breakthrough the next day. The people that cut you off, that talk about you, that try to destroy you, that try to do everything, just miss what God has already promised. Okay? And not everybody deserves you sharing everything that God said to them. Okay? I have a lot of people that just missed this season with me. They just did. I can tell you that. I'm not mad at them. Because I knew what God said. They didn't. I knew what God spoke. They didn't. So because I know what God spoke, because you know what God spoke, you hang in there. Fight a good fight of faith. Don't look left and right. Because the biggest promise of God is about to hate your way. It's about to invade you. It's about to, yes, you're staying in the fight. Matter of fact, the miracle that you're about to receive is more dependent on how you've stayed fatherly trying to see your greatest victory. So you got to have a perspective. Number one, what type of a perspective? That this new season, God's calling you to a greater level of increase. More greater than where you were before. God's bringing you to a greater level of increase. Michael, I've had the word increase. It's, it's the most easy word we use in the church. I've had increase, increase. We're going to get increase. Yes, a lot of church people are used to the word. But that word increase means something different to you than it will mean to somebody else. And if it means something to you, somebody, whoever I'm talking to you here tonight, it's because God wants to do exactly that. So this season of transition God wants to bring fruitfulness, a new level, a new dimension, a new hope, a new miracle. A place. Think of a place. Think about a season you've never been before. Think about about. Think about all the things you've been expecting in your new season. If your mind can comprehend them, God is going to bring it to you in the name of Jesus. Somehow, you thought that this new season. You're going to figure it out yourself. You're going to have to work in your power. You've laid out your strategies, which is good. You're supposed to lay the plan and the vision all together. But when God comes into the equation, He makes your plans, your ideas more easier, and He prepares a table of favor before you. Glory to God, glory to God. Who am I talking to? Glory to God, glory to God. So that's why I'm here to remind you. Number two, God is leadership. There's no way, there's no way how you can go through a transition, a spiritual transition. Because in the spiritual transition, it's you that feels like you're blind. It almost makes you feel like you're blind. It almost makes you feel like you don't see. Okay? And since you don't feel like you see, you don't sense, all you see is things breaking around you, all you see is the attack, all you see is all this. Okay? You might as well invite the Holy Ghost. Allow God's leadership to take you. It's just like it's just like a blind man who doesn't see. He's covered by his eyes. That's you. Imagine you being covered in your in your in your in your eyes. But but you have someone that's holding your hand and they're having you to walk on the other side. You don't see where you're going. But you're holding on to someone to go to the other side and you're trusting. You're content. You don't see and you're not worried. You don't see but you're not agitated. You don't see but you're not anxious. Because you trust that the hand that's holding you in this transition is a hand of God that's going to take you to the other side where your promise is. And when you get over there, okay, you, you, you know, this blinder that's been on you, Okay, the blinder, and sometimes a blinder gets onto you so that you don't get distracted about where you're going because you might stop along the way and say, Lord, I'm not taking it, I'm not going there. If you saw everything, glory to God, glory to God. So, 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 in transition, it almost feels like your eyes are covered, you don't see how a lot you don't see on the other side of the tunnel so well. And, and, and you don't see what everything, that's why you're supposed to rely on God, but your hand is, your face is covered, and, 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 and a hand, God's hand, is supposed to, that's why I'm saying that in this process, in this transition, 
Allow God's leadership. Allow God to take the lead. Allow God to take the lead. You remember what he what God told the children of Israel when he picked them out of the of, of, of the land of Egypt? He said, I will go before you and drive out those enemies, those sons of Anak. I will drive out. This is prophetic for someone I'm talking to right now. He says, I will drive. He says, when you let me lead you, I will go ahead of you and make those you know crooked places straight. Okay? I am the you know, I'm the voice in the wilderness. Preparing the way. In other words, God caves the way. The place is crooked. The season is messed up. You have no hope. You don't know how you're going to get out of there. But God said, you know what? Hang in there, child of God. The battle is not for you to be defeated. The battle is for you to have a testimony. Because this testimony will be told to your children's children. That when you are down, God picked you up. When you're sick, He healed you. When you are going through everything, God changed the entire season around you. Because you stayed in that process. Okay? He told the children, I will drive them out. But you know what? Because the children of Israel are intent on looking at the enemy, the size of the enemy, the size of it. They look, they look, they look. That's the problem. In your transition, don't look at what's falling apart, what you're going to lose and everything. Look at the size of your God. Look at the size. Don't look at the size of the pandemic and everything that's come along with it. You know, look at the size of your God. Oh, Rabbi, say, take care. I said, look at the size of your God in this season. We are hanging on God. We are, we are staying steadfast on God. We are praising God. We are dancing for God. We are excited for God. We want to hang on. You know, our story and report is not about what the enemy is doing. Our report is on what God said tonight in the name of Jesus. Not the size of the battle, but the size of the kingdom of God and the size of the promise of God. Somebody shout hallelujah and share, share this with somebody next to you and tell them they need to hear this word because some of them have been in despair. They've been torn apart. They've been fearful. They don't know how to cross over, but you are crossing over. 2021 is going to be the greatest year. Brother Michael, I had that before. Don't say that again. I'm repeating it again. I am repeating it in by the word of God. You are being reinforced to wake up, seize up the moment and go forward in the name. Do you see it? No, you don't feel like you see it because it's a limbo. But you know what? If you're able to see everything that God ever promised you, you won't able you won't be able to try. If you knew what it was going to take, you wouldn't be able to try. See, that's why you need the leadership of the Holy Ghost to allow God to take the lead. Allow God to take the lead. Allow God to take the lead, child of God. Allow, uh, let me repeat that again, please. And the reason why I'm repeating that again is that some of you are so stubborn. You don't want to let God take the lead. Because you know what? We live in a culture where we are the chiefs and the bosses at the same time. So we have so many chiefs ruling. So when God says, let me take over, you say, no, let me take over. God said, let me take over from here. I know how to navigate you through this storm. He said, no. I saw what happened last time. It almost felt like I was drowning. You came too late. I am seeing a lot of Christians struggling with their faith. They're struggling. They don't want to trust God with anything. I'm seeing a lot of Christians who don't want to go because they're too stubborn. Too stubborn. They're hard-headed. God says, I know the storm that's coming at you. I know the kind of people that are talking about you. I know everybody. Don't give them a badge. Don't nudge at them. Don't go back. Don't fight those battles. Stay with me. Because if you go in that battle, they're going to cave you. They're going to they're gonna spin you like CNN and Fox News and them. Don't try to go there. What you're going to have to do is stay with me. Walk with me. Allow me to go ahead of you. I will clean the place up. I will remove the mountains. I will break the chains like Paul and Silas. I will heal you. I will raise you up again. I will make you a rule of many of, of many things. You're going to be the head and not the tail. Because I'm not a son of man to lie. What I said, I will do it. That's your kind of God. You ought to be able to praise Him in the name of Jesus. Don't get me started. Because I feel the anointing over here right now to prophesy to you. That you child of God, you are going to change the rules of engagement. Now, 
Okay? And how do you change the rules of engagement? When you let God take over and you step back and he takes, takes over, you every step he takes, you take. Every move you, he makes, you move. That's why he told the, the children of Israel, I will take you out of Kadesh. I'll remove you in Mountain Harlem. I'll take you by the Jordan and I'll take you to the promised land. Every step you take, we are going together. And together with me, we'll take the, the, the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle with me. Wherever we preach, the presence of God shall come and dwell among you. I will be your protection by night and I will be your defender by day. He's, he's got all the dots covered, but you know what? In transition, sometimes you don't feel it, you don't see it. That's why you need to give him your hand so that you can walk with him and trust him that he will do the best of the best in the name of Jesus. Who am I talking to tonight? Because this is yours. <laughs> this is yours, my child of God. This is yours. This is part two. This is yours. Okay? This is yours. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. You have been in God's way for quite a long time. Get out of the way. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you, saints. You've been in God's way for quite a long time. You might, might as well get out of the way. Anyway, And when you are in his way, you tried and fell. Now let him take over from here. Is it hard? Yes, it is. Is it tough? Yes, it is. But you know what? The just shall live by faith. And those who know their God will do exploits. So, because the mighty one of Israel, he's a breaker. He goes ahead of you and break through so you walk in. You see what he does and you do it. You take on, you take on. Because what God wants to show you is he wants to see the very enemy that's been trying to take over you. Trying to defeat you, weary you, stop you, got you tired. Step on his head. Bruise his head. Bruise his head in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, in the transition that I'm talking about right now, where you're in a limbo, you can feel it, you can sense it, but you're in the movement. Sometimes you're sitting down, you're in your bed resting, but in the spirit you're moving. You're getting closer to your breakthrough. And sometimes you thought last week was crazy, but and you laid and started to pray. And the next moment, somebody gives you a call. And this call is so, so strategic to your dream, to your idea. You know what? You say, Lord, I was just sleeping and I got this phone. Oh, what? In the spirit, you were in motion. You were in motion. <laughs> Who am I talking to? Prophetic. It is prophetic for you. Guess what? Because you let God take over. Stop being stubborn. I'm saying that again. So, Brother Michael, how am I being stubborn? Every time you want to do God's work. Anytime you want to say, you know what, I want to do a cheap copy. I want to do a photocopy of what I think God will be doing so I, it might look that God's doing it. No. Oh, let him to fully take over. Let him rule. Let him reign. Let him, let him smantle like he told the children of Israel. I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians. Have you ever prayed and told God, just like you stretched out your hand to the Egyptians, stretch your hand against this situation. Stretch your hand about against this pandemic. Stretch your hand against this poverty. Stretch your hand against every setback that's coming against me. Stretch your, stretch your hand and smite the enemy right in my face and the glory will go back to you. You've got to tell God, just like you smit the Egyptians, you smit the Babylonians, the Persians, and the Romans, and the evil ones, the witch doctors, and the voodoo ones, and everything they try to do against me. Just like you did before, you're doing it again in the name of Jesus. And guess what, saints? When you begin to do that, ha <laughs> ha, glory, mighty things will begin to happen. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Number three, let him finish the work. Let him finish the work. He started something in you. Don't ever let, when God is the one who started the work, never hire somebody to finish what God started in you. Mm -mm -mm. Did you hear that? Never hire. See, in the military, there's what they call the mercenaries. The mercenaries are special force. They're not in the army. They're private private security. The masses are trained totally different. When the real army cannot go forward, they hire them to finish the job. But the army was trained to finish, to do the job for everything. But they need reinforcement. In the kingdom of God, 
the only person you employ, the only person you invite in the equation of finishing the assignment is God himself because he's the author and the finish of it. He doesn't like to share any kind of glory. See, a lot of people have come in your life. Let me say this to you. A whole lot of people have come in your life just because they prophesied doesn't mean they're the ones to, to, supposed to accomplish. They were just sent words to you. So they should not take the glory and say, well, that sister, I know that sister. I'm the one that prophesied to her. I, I, who do you call, who do you think you are? I, I'm the, no, the I is God. The I is not a man. Oh, prophet so so and say, you know what, that prophetic guy, the prophet, no. A mighty God sends men of God in the flesh and sends them to you to prophesy. They don't, they're not supposed to share your glory. Now, unless they come in your life and God tells them, go take a million dollars to her. If they can bring a million dollars, maybe they can brag about it. They can brag about the million and say, you know, God sent me to send... Uh, Sister Katharina and everybody else, or uh, Brother Davis, you know, a million dollars. They can talk about it. But if they're only coming to you to give you a divine word from heaven, okay, about your breakthrough, the glory is not there. The glory belongs to God. And that, that's the reason why we're having a problem with the prophetic realm. People are missing God because they want to take the glory because they think they, think they have from the Lord. And they miss it. So do never, don't ever invite man of flesh in the equation of what God does. It. I'm not saying that you push the prophetic away, okay, or be around the prophetic realm because you need it. The Bible said, having done all, I wish all men to prophesy, okay? He's called us to walk in, all of us to walk in the prophetic realm to have the eyes of God and the voice of God. So I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that especially people who want to take credit, okay? For what God's doing in your life. That's that's where the problem is. Be careful. Be discerning. Okay? When God sends me to people and prophesy, I do not share. I don't take the glory away from that. It is God who sent me. I'm obedient to Him. I deliver the word and that's it. And I go on to the next. So be careful. Let Him finish the work that He began from you. That He began through you in the name of Jesus. Okay? Number four is that the whole thing, the whole plan about transition was not about the only things that you get. Okay? Because all we've missed it sometimes. We are asking for a transition, but most people don't even know why the transition is supposed to be taking place. The whole part about transition was not only part about what you get, the money you get, the breakthroughs you get, the friends you get, everything. The whole part, if you never, never get this, you want, to, you want to enjoy your transition? Know this. Ask yourself, what am I going to become after I cross over? What am I going to become? The whole plan of God about to every transition in your life, it is you. It is what you become. That's why the warfare was mad. The enemy was mad at you. That's why the enemy resisted and you pushed back. You refused to give up because there was another dimension of power. There was another dimension of anointing. There was another dimension of glory. There was another dimension of maturity. There was another dimension of how you forgive people and let go. There was another dimension of joy. There was another dimension of authority that you are going to walk in. There was another fullness of the image of God and the garment of heaven that you are gonna be dressed in it was not because of the money the new car the house yeah you get all of that but guess what the most important thing is how mighty you become the whole part of this transition and being born of the Spirit of God is how mighty you become you are weak in the flesh on another level you are beat up on another level you are being defeated a lot on another level now that God has taken you from that to this place you are mighty the demons of yesterday have no power over you. The demons of last year have no power because you've moved into a new dimension of glory and no devil in hell can hinder the move of God in your life. It was about you. It was everything, all the hell that broke, broke loose around, yes, it was God making you greater and mightier than you used to be. 
that got to excite you. It's just like you're spending 30 days, 30 days in the gym. You're working against machines. You're working against every muscle. You're working and your muscles are, are being torn, but they're being rebuilt. Okay? Your muscles are being stretched, but you're being strengthened. Your muscles are going through such a heavy level of weight, but you're being strengthened. Every part of your body is being rebuilt. Your protein level, your heart, your blood circulation, your lungs, the level you breathe and everything, you're being strengthened. That's what happens in the spirit. The whole part of transition was making you strong. You didn't know that you're going to breathe better in the spirit. You didn't know that you're going to praise God better. You're going to walk in the authority of God where you've never been before. But you know what? You thought, God, why did you set me up? Why, why did people hate me? Why people don't like me? Why, why is it that you're moving from this zip code? Take me to another one. Yes. Because God is building you up in the spirit. And because it's building you up in the spirit. By the time you come back in town. The people you left on that level will be saying, oh, wow. It's just like Moses. Moses leaves the people in the valley. He goes up in the mountain. Let me tell you. Mount Sinai was not just a simple small mountain. Mount Sinai was a mighty long tall mountain. He climbs it up. That, that in itself physically, it was making him strong. Okay? And then he gets over there and he finds this amazing being, glorious being. Stays there for 40 days. He gets into the presence of God and he loses his earthly appetite. He turns around, he marvels. He says, I've never been at this level before. You're about to say that. You're about to decree that. I have never been at this level before. I have never had this power before. He gets into the presence of God and he is marveling. And the Lord tells him, Get, take off your sandals for the place in which you stand, you tread, is holy. Now he's entered into a holy dimension. Where in the holy dimension, it doesn't depend on earthly things. Glory to God, glory to God. On this dimension, he got out of the valley. Like you're getting out of the valley. 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 You're, of the valley. you're going up to a higher dimension in God. And by the time he gets back down, his countenance, they looked at him. And his countenance was so glorious. They looked at him. There was fire on him. They looked at him. There was glory. They looked at him. They marveled. Why? He was in the presence of God. That transition up was going to dress him to make him a new man. From a guy who used to run away and was fearful of Pharaoh to a guy who would say, let my people go. <laughs> Child of God. Something great is about to happen for you. Because this transition was not meant to kill you. Was not meant to destroy you. I was reading, my scripture was from John chapter 3. Amen. But I want to read you something more before, before I close. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to I want you to open Psalm 19 and verse 5. Or let me begin from verse 4. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the earth. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming out of, the, of, of his chamber 
and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. It's rising from one end of heaven and it's circuit to the other end and there's nothing hidden from his head. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wide, the wise simple. The statutes of the Lord are right and rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous all together. What I like to show you is that now that you realize that you're being transformed into the image of God, the image of God radiates, radiates unto you. When you see Him, you partake of what He is, okay? Where He abides, you abide. The presence of God, the presence of God radiates on you that when you turn to go back and meet the people, like I told you before, the people who despise you today, they missed your tomorrow. The people who despise you today, they missed your tomorrow. And that's okay. Don't try to convince them. Don't try to change their mind. Because once they see this carnalness of the glory of God, just like the text has read, once they see that, <laughs> they will know you've been in the presence of God. You know you've been through this season. They were not there when you're going through. But God Almighty, all right, God Almighty has prepared you for a special season. You come out strong, you come out mighty, you come out glorious, because all things are possible to them that believe. Tonight, the Lord sent me to give you that. Tonight, the Lord sent me to decree over you the fullness of God. The perfect law of God, you know, covers the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making the wise simple. I like that. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoice, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord are pure, enlightening. All of that pertains to you, the fullness of God. It was God who started it all. It's God who wants to finish it with you. Never give anybody permission to take credit on what God has permitted. Never. Glory to God. Tonight, the Lord sent me to give you that. Hopefully, He's going to give me another word for you tomorrow. I can't wait. Invite somebody. Our page is going to be hot every single day. Please pray for us because Wild Trumpet TV 2021, now I can give you a date. 2021 Wild Trumpet TV network will be live and beaming all over the world. And I'm excited about the lineup of great men of God and men and women of God who are coming on. I'm excited to let you know about that. You can see most of the announcements on my other pages, you know. Uh, we just opened up at least a separate page for the Trumpet TV Globe. We're excited about what's happening. I'll let you know more and more, but keep us in prayer. Because we want this word that we're able to share this evening right to a few people. It's going to go to millions of people. Access to 80, 90 million people right here in North America. Almost 300 million people over South America. We're talking to a company, a satellite company in Europe that's going to cover us, you know cover us in Africa and Europe and the Far East. There's no telling, reaching 5 billion people. Pray for us because right now as we speak, let me be open with you, is that we're looking for a place for what's going to be our production center. We're almost close. We're believing God for God's favor. That means that, that our production center, you know, that's the place we're going to have host all our friends and, and uh, you know, do tremendous work. What is it for those of you who are new to what we call the War Trumpet Network? It's a vision about evangelism and discipleship, highlighting global moves of God, places where God's moving mightily. And number three is also a humanitarian transformation uh, network 
where we are believing God to take love, kindness to the people that are being hit. Look at the people who are going through the storm in California, places like that. God's sending us there. We are, we have, we are in partnership with some of our great friends right here in Dallas who God's using to take you know, tremendous support around the world. Her name is Susie Jennings. You know, uh, me and my friends are, are connecting with her to pray and believe God for great and mighty things. I, I might as well announce that because, you know, for the last 10 years I've been uh, uh, networking with her. And she's taking uh, One Day 2020. For those of you in a One Day 2020, is going worldwide, it's going global. And Uganda is part of it, Sudan is part of it. Actually, I'm helping coordinate Uganda. I'm helping coordinate Tan, uh, Sudan and, uh, and uh, Rwanda, Burundi, uh, uh, through my dad, of course. But we are thankful for what God's doing in the name of Jesus. Love you guys. I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for, for tuning in. I hope that this blessed you tonight in the name of Jesus.